Hey everyone, in this video I'll be explaining flywheels. Now flywheels are energy storage units and they're used to keep an engine running smooth and to keep it running when you're not giving it gas or it's in neutral. Now a good analogy is a potter's wheel. So if you think about a potter's wheel they have a little foot press that they keep pressing and it spins a large stone on the bottom. And as that stone's rotating it's connected to a table in which they hold the clay and they can shape and mold it and that clay is spinning at a constant speed and that's because of the flywheel down at the bottom that has its inertia and so it stays at a constant speed even though the force that you apply is at intervals. So the same idea can be applied to cars. So cars have flywheels attached at the end of the engine or attached to the crankshaft uh, and it's the item that will be pressed against with the transmission. So you'll either have a clutch or a torque, con torque converter and the torque converter would be mounted um, attached to the flywheel and the clutch would the clutch plate would press against it uh, when you were trying to accelerate or when you're engaging the clutch rather. So the basic idea is if you didn't have that flywheel on there you'd have a really uneven power distribution. So I went through here and we've got the four strokes divided up intake, compression, power, and exhaust. So you've got intake occurring in the first stage, your compression occurring in the second stage, and then you've got your power stroke. So your engine's not producing any torque when you're not in that power stroke, and then once you get to it, you have a peak of power. So you'd have a jerk if you were in a vehicle. Now this is eliminated by adding this flywheel. So your torque is very even, and so even when you're not applying that power stroke, you'll have uh, power distribution because of the inertia of the flywheel maintains power. So basically, however, if you increase the size of the flywheel, then you can increase the smoothness and basically level this out. So you can see there's still a little bump. You could get rid of that completely if you just had a big enough flywheel. So why wouldn't you just have a really huge flywheel since you'll have a smoother running and an even power delivery engine? Well, there's two problems really. You've got more rotational inertia if you have a larger flywheel and that means you've got to spin that flywheel up and to do that takes a lot of energy. So that's just wasting fuel. You're just trying to get a flywheel spinning and that's not getting you to move anywhere. Second, added weight. You want to keep everything in your car as light as possible just for handling purposes for pretty much all purposes of, of the performance aspect of a vehicle. So you want to keep the flywheel weight as low as possible but still have even torque delivery and that's the purpose of it. Now it's difficult to show you my flywheel because it's internal, but here's the basic idea. If you've got the engine here, so you've got the cylinders lined across there, and then inside of this case where there's a clutch, the flywheel's going to be spinning in here. <clears throat> and that's actually what the starter motor will attach to to start the engine. 